बसमीम् अल्लाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर थ्री ऑन लीनियर कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर विच वॉज लेक्चर नंबर टू वी डिस्कस्ड द फीड फॉरवर्ड एंड फीड बैक कंट्रोल टोपोलॉजीज एज़ वेल एज़ द फंडामेंटल ट्रेड ऑफ इन द फीड बैक कंट्रोल्स सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ फीड फॉरवर्ड कंट्रोल वी डिस्कस्ड दैट इन फीड फॉरवर्ड कंट्रोल वट वी डू इज़ वी मयर द डिस्टर्बेंस एक्टिंग ऑन द प्लान इफ देर आर एनी and based on the measurement of the disturbances and the model of the plant we calculate the input u that will ensure that the output of the plant is following uh, the reference value that is given or provided to the controller and secondly we discuss that in the feedback control uh, we just uh, we don't need to rely on the model of the plant or the measurement of the disturbances uh, without having any measurement of the disturbances or without uh, even accurate model of the plant you can still achieve y nearly equal to y ref Uh, if your control is large enough so in that sense feedback control is robust and it can reject the disturbances the only problem is uh, when there is disturbance and noise in the sensor so this we discussed last time that if there is a noise in the sensor then the output uh, of the plant may not track the reference value exactly and uh, because of the uh, the effect of noise is uh, in in uh, like uh, the effect of noise is measured in terms of something called complementary sensitivity function and the effect of disturbances on the output of the plant is measured in terms of something called sensitivity function and the fundamental trade off in the design of feedback control is that uh, the sensitivity plus complementary sensitivity is always equal to 1 which means that if you try to suppress the effect of noise on the output the effect of disturbance is uh, amplified and if you try to attenuate the effect of disturbances on the output the effect of noise is amplified so so you just hope that uh, the noise and the disturbance uh, occur at different frequencies at least uh, and in the frequency domain control design we try to design the controller that has uh, high sensitive uh, low sensitivity at the frequencies where disturbances are occurring and low complementary sensitivity at the frequencies where noise is uh, present in the sensors so that was about the lecture number 2 and now in lecture number 3 we are going to uh, discuss mathematical modeling of linear time invariant systems uh, why do we uh, model physical systems so first of all uh, it uh, there are two options like uh, an option uh, to work directly on the physical system like for example if you trying to develop control system for an aeroplane uh, you do certain experiments on the aeroplane uh, you fail in certain experiments you crash a few aeroplanes and you know you waste a lot of money and maybe it would be dangerous to the lives as well and but the other option is that you develop a mathematical model of the aeroplane that gives you the behavior of that aeroplane in terms of variable values and then you design the controller based on that model uh, to avoid you know um, unnecessary expenses and unnecessary danger or risk in some cases uh, it also takes up a lot of time to uh, work with actual physical systems that is why we develop mathematical models of those physical systems and and we basically uh, using a mathematical model is uh, a uh, a representation of a physical system that basically depicts the behavior of that physical system in response to different inputs Uh, what does uh, lti really means uh, like practically uh, mathematically you know that lti means that linear time invariant linear means that the system is uh, following superposition principle uh, in terms of input and output and time invariant means that the dynamics of the systems do not change over time so whatever input output relationship is uh, it does not uh, change like uh, as the time passes so linear time invariant easy to uh, model and analyze and design uh, why easy to model analyze and design because of uh, uh, the property of superposition and the property that uh, the design uh, 
uh, the property that you know it uh, the dynamics would not change over time so if the dynamics do not change over time then the design that you develop based on that model will work uh, if it works right now then it will keep on working in future as well so that's the advantage of uh, time invariant uh, and then this is the advantage of linearity and time invariance as well that linear systems are easier to model because if you know the response to a one input or a two inputs then you can find the response to any input which is a linear combination of those inputs um, and that makes things a lot more easier what do we expect from uh, the models of the LTI systems the models shall represent the behavior of the real system fairly accurately so if the model is predicting something about the system uh, that it will uh, the values of its output then the actual physical system uh, in the actual physical system the value of the output should, should also behave as predicted by the model so that's uh, relevant to the accuracy of the model uh, the model shouldn't change over time and shall follow superposition principle that expectation is due to this lti uh, property of the system and uh, this is uh, these are the key fundamental questions that we need to understand before we even dive into today's lecture why do we model physical systems what does lti really mean and what do we expect from the models of lti systems so i hope this is clear uh, enough by now and uh, uh, now we go into the types of LTI system models that we are going to discuss in this course. So first of all, the, you can model an LTI system in terms of differential equations. And you can also model an LTI system as a transfer function. And you can also model uh, LTI system as an impulse in, the, in uh, with the help of its impulse response. And you can also uh, model an LTI system based on its frequency characteristics. And you can also model an LTI systems based on uh, the state space modeling uh, technique. So at least four of these techniques we will discuss in this lecture. The state space model will be discussed in the next lecture. So first of all, let us uh, look at this LTI system. So LTI system is something like, uh, so in this course, we will be mostly focused on single input and single output systems and uh, so the system will have a single input and a single output means that u will be a scalar variable and y will also be a scalar variable rather it could be a function of time and this is also another function of time okay so uh, the standard form of any lti uh, standard form of the differential equation based model of any lti system is like this it's an nth order differential uh, equation uh, sorry the nth order uh, uh, different uh, derivative based uh, uh, function of the output and uh, is equal to the mth order derivatives uh, based uh, uh, you can call it derivative type polynomial of the inputs so I'm not I'm hesitant to call this a polynomial because you know these are the rates of change and but on the other hand if you define uh, the m mth derivative of u as a, as a variable and m minus one -th derivative of u as another variable then this is sort of like a um, you know it looks like a polynomial but anyways this is a differential equation not a polynomial so this is an ordinary differential equation on the left hand side we have all the uh, derivative this is the zero order derivative of the output uh, multiplied with some coefficient constant coefficient this is first order derivative of the output multiplied by constant coefficient and so on up to the nth order uh, remember this uh, that uh, the highest derivative of the output it always have a coefficient of one so if in a, any given differential equation the coefficient is other than one then we define divide the whole equation by that coefficient to normalize uh, this uh, differential equation and on the right hand side we have derivatives of the input with constant coefficients b0 b1 and up to so on notice that the, the the coefficient of higher highest derivative of the input does not have to be one it can be any constant value b0 
and now we um, also uh, because uh, in this course we will be uh, concerned with the physical systems so physical systems are causal causal means that output cannot happen before the input is applied so mathematically uh, there could be systems where output will happen even before the input is applied um, I don't know the systems uh, something like palmistry or something uh, future predicting type of systems but uh, you know uh, in the real physical systems uh, causality is there uh, because the cause is first and then the effect appears so we will assume m to be less than or equal to n uh, to ensure that uh, we are only studying the causal systems and non-causal systems although mathematically they exist but physically since uh, you know most of the systems are causal so it only makes sense to you know study uh, causal systems uh, so that uh, our you know uh, it also makes uh, some of the calculations easier for us okay uh, so this is the standard form of the differential equation model and then uh, let's look at the example of uh, this type of model for example uh, this example has been taken from the control systems engineering book by norman s nice uh, which uh, to me i think it's one of the best books on control systems in terms of being comprehensive it covers uh, you know uh, control systems in in a broad very broad sense and there are a lot of examples for everything and there is like matlab based examples you i mean anything you need about control systems is there in this book so, so it's highly recommended for for new people who want to learn uh, the control systems okay so this circuit uh, this is an rlc circuit and uh, we define the input of this circuit to be the input applied voltage here and the output of this circuit to be the voltage across this capacitor vc and the differential equations governing this circuit are <clears throat> l times di by dt which is the voltage across the inductor plus r times i which is voltage across resistor plus 1 over c times integral from 0 to t i tau d tau which is the voltage across the capacitor and is equal to vt which is the applied voltage by the way this is the uh, very well known kirchhoff voltage law and uh, using i is equal to dq by dt and q is equal to c times v of c vc is the voltage across capacitor we can rewrite this above equation as l times c times uh, d the, the second derivative of uh, the capacitor voltage plus r times c times uh, the first derivative of the voltage plus the voltage itself and then uh, this is equal to the applied input voltage so uh, this equation if you look at this equation uh, if you divide the whole equation on both sides by l times c then this is this will become the standard form of the differential equation uh, where there will be higher derivatives of the outputs on the left hand side and the input and its derivatives on the right hand side so there is no derivative of the input in this case that means that m is equal to zero so m is the highest derivative of the input on the right hand side in the previous slide so this here here in the example of the circuit uh, m is equal to zero so this is b naught times the input b naught in this case would be one over lc because we haven't uh, standardized this equation yet okay so next is the transfer function based model of uh, lti systems uh, the transfer function based model is obtained by taking the laplace transform of the input and the output and uh, the transfer function uh, the laplace transform converts the time domain uh, representation of the system into frequency domain representation of the system where us is the laplace transform of u of t and y uh, ys is the laplace transform of y of t and uh, uh, if we assume zero initial conditions uh, which means that y of zero is zero this y of zero is zero and initially all the derivative 
all the derivatives uh, of the output and the output itself is equal to zero and initially at t equal to zero the input and all the derivatives of the input are also zero if we assume these zero initial conditions then uh, then we can easily get the transfer function from the differential equation because after assuming zero initial condition uh, the derivative is simply replaced by the laplace variable s and the double derivative is replaced by uh, you know s square and uh, the uh, laplace transform is multiplied so i will show you on the next slide so for example if you have this differential equation that we saw a couple of slides ago then you take laplace transform under zero initial conditions then nth derivative of y becomes s raised to the power n times the laplace transform of y and the this n minus 1 derivative of y becomes laplace uh, s raised power n minus 1 times laplace transform of y this a1 is a constant coefficient so it comes down as it is similarly all of these uh, come down as uh, in the frequency domain very easily the derivatives are replaced by powers of s and uh, the instead of this uh, u there uh, is the laplace of u and b1 comes uh, down as it is uh, as b1 so you take u of s common from the right hand side and y of s common from the left hand side and what you do is you uh, cross multiply and uh, y of s divided by u of s which is the transfer function this turns out to be the b naught times s power m plus b1 times s power m minus 1 and up to so on bm and the denominator is s raised to the power n plus a1 times s raised power n minus 1 so notice this uh, similarity between this denominator uh, polynomial of the transfer function uh, and this uh, uh, left hand side of the differential equation and uh, the numerator of the transfer function and the right hand side of the uh, differential equation so it will be uh, under zero initial conditions uh, it is very easy to uh, convert a differential equation into a transfer function you don't even have to take laplace transform mathematically it's just you can use uh, the fact that the derivative of uh, nth derivative of y if you take the laplace transform it will be s raised power n times the laplace of uh, y so either y of s is the laplace of y of t u of s is the laplace of u of t all right so this is the transfer function uh, g of s y of, is the ratio of laplace transform of output over input of uh, an lti system and it can be obtained it is it's uh, this is the general form of the transfer function so there are some uh, notations regarding the transfer function for example the order of the transfer function is equal to the degree of the transfer function which is the highest power of s in the denominator in this case n and relative degree of the transfer function is the difference between the highest power of s in the denominator versus the highest power of s in the numerator so n minus m is called the relative degree of the transfer function and there is also something called dc gain of the transfer function since s is the frequency variable if you put s equal to zero like frequency equal to zero then uh, the gain the value of the transfer function is called g at zero g at s equal to zero if you uh, put s equal to zero in this transfer function the only thing that remains in the numerator is this constant bm and only thing rem that remains in the denominator is this constant an so dc gain is bm over an so this is also useful uh, uh, later on when we do some analysis on the lti systems all right so another thing is that this denominator of the transfer function s raised power n plus a1 times s raised power n minus 1 plus up to so on a n if you put it equal to zero this is called the characteristic equation of the transfer function and its roots are called the roots of this equation are called uh, poles of the transfer function so i hope you already know that if a polynomial is of the order n it will have n roots all right 
so these are some notations about the transfer function and this is an example so this is the same example as we saw before for the differential equation these are the same equations that we looked at uh, in the uh, you know uh, uh, two three slides ago now if we take the laplace transform assuming zero initial conditions then this constant lc will uh, come down as it is this second derivative will become s square and this rc will come down as it is this derivative will become s and this vc so we have taken vc of s as a co common uh, and uh, this will be uh, the, when you take v sub c as common then there will be one here and on the other side uh, the laplace of v of t is v of s and if you uh, take the ratio v of our laplace transform of output over input vc over vs that will be uh, 1 over lc in the numerator remember that we have to first uh, convert it into standard form by dividing the whole equation by 1 over lc uh, dividing the whole equation by lc and then this will uh, become 1 over lc times v of s so cross multiplication that will get, get us the s square plus r over l times s plus 1 over lc in the denominator and 1 over lc in the numerator so this will be the transfer function representation of this circuit so circuit is a physical system and this mathematical model is representation of that physical system which will tell us what happens to the capacitor voltage in physical world when we apply a certain voltage input v of t at the input so uh, this was the uh, second type of mathematical representation or mathematical model of lti systems which is uh, the transfer function so far we have looked at the differential equation and the transfer function next we look at the impulse response based model of lti system the impulse response based model of lti system is generated by applying the unit impulse uh, to lti system under zero initial conditions and the response uh, is a function of time which is called impulse response so mathematically impulse response is basically also obtained from the in laplace inverse of the transfer function if you have the transfer function of the uh, system already you can obtain the impulse response from the laplace uh, inverse of the transfer function so that is also one of the reasons why impulse response is considered as one of the models of the lti systems because laplace uh, this transfer function is the mo mathematical model of an LTI system. So Laplace inverse of a mathematical model is yet another mathematical model in the time domain. So you can also get uh, transfer function from the impulse response by taking the forward Laplace transform. And also uh, these are some examples of uh, impulse responses. Uh, I will also show you examples using MATLAB as well. So if you have a first order system uh, first order system means that uh, the highest degree highest power of s in the denominator is one the if you apply unit impulse usually the impulse response is an exponential decay and similarly if you have higher order systems uh, higher order over damped systems uh, we will get into the details of what is the meaning of over damped later on in this course uh, so for now you just need to know that different types of impulse response for different types of systems uh, look something like this so i can also show the same uh, to you using uh, matlab for example uh, this is matlab so if i have uh, uh, g1 equals uh, the transfer function uh, uh, 1 over let's suppose s plus 2 uh, then this will be I, I press the enter so tf is the command to generate transfer function in matlab we have a transfer function first order transfer function 1 over s plus 2 and if we want to see what is the impulse 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 response of this uh, g1 then we can use the command impulse of g1 and this matlab is busy right now it will show us the impulse response of g1 very soon so we can see the impulse response will look something like this so because this is the first order transfer function so the impulse you see you can see here now the impulse response is a decaying exponential so you can similarly look at the ex impulse response of let's say uh, s plus six so this is another uh, transfer function and it is again a decaying exponential but if we have some uh, over damped uh, transfer function for example um, 
1 over s square plus 6x plus 6x 6s plus 2 uh, how do i know that this is an over damped transfer function well you will also be able to know uh, how a transfer function is over damped uh, after a few lectures uh, in this course so if i uh, now uh, see now this impulse response looks uh, something like uh, this so here uh, this is the impulse response of an over damped uh, type of uh, uh, transfer function and uh, similarly uh, let's make it a little bit more over damped uh, increase the over dampedness by increasing this factor let's make it six uh, so now this response is something like this um, let me make this uh, uh, let's say uh, let's make this equal to 4 and make this equal to uh, let's say 4.1 and we look at now this is a little bit uh, you know more more of a slowness in the beginning that's what i wanted to show you and then if you have uh, something like a higher order system under damped so if there is an under damped system then uh, you can have uh, uh, let's say this is an under damped system and if the impulse response so you can see it is uh, uh, more vibrations in the impulse response make it a little bit more under damped so and then you look at the impulse response so this is like this is the impulse response of an under damped but it all goes to zero in the end uh, based on its stability we haven't discussed stability yet in this course but we will okay then there is step response so the step response mathematically it is the laplace inverse of uh, the transfer function divided by s so the laplace transform of uh, the uh, the transfer if you divide the transfer function by an s uh, then uh, you get uh, and then take the laplace inverse you get the step response also if you if you uh, take the forward laplace of the d by dt of the step response then that would be transfer function and tra step response is also equal to uh, the integral of the impulse response and in the laboratory if you want to generate the step response using oscilloscope or something then you have to under zero initial conditions you have to apply the unit step input to the plant and the response of the plant against unit step input that will be the step response of the plant and step response have uh, some examples for example this is the step response of the first order system uh, so for example we can also look at this uh, uh, look at this in the in the MATLAB as well so for example if you look at this uh, if you uh, make G equal s plus 4 uh, 1 over s plus 4 so this is uh, the DC gain of this transfer function this is first order transfer function and its DC gain is 1 1 over 4 and so if you look at the step response step response so step is the command to generate step response so if you look at the step response of g1 so it's uh, something like similar to uh, uh, a rising exponential as depicted here and the value of the rising exponential will be uh, 0.25 will be the steady state value which is 1 over 4 which is equal to the dc gain so this is one of the advantages of dc gain similarly you can use matlab to uh, plot step response of uh, many transfer function as many as you like okay so then the importance of impulse response uh, the importance of impulse response is that we can compute uh, the uh, the output uh, to any generic input uh, using the knowledge of the impulse response so for example if we know the impulse response g of t for any lti system and we want to know what will be the output of the system against any input let's say sinusoidal input u of t uh, then we don't need to uh, apply that sinusoidal input in the lab to the system and record the output rather we can calculate uh, calculation means we can predict the output of the system against any input that is any function of continuous function of time which is integrable 
so that is why impulse response qualifies as the model of the system because if you know the impulse if you know the LTI the response of the LTI system to the unit impulse under zero initial conditions then you can uh, de de derive the response of the same LTI system uh, to any continuous time input uh, uh, um, you know applied to that system uh, using uh, this equation which is the convolution integral and then there are uh, frequency characteristics and uh, the frequency characteristics is nothing new but uh, it's just uh, a realization that uh, transfer function of the system is uh, nothing but a complex number uh, a complex number you already know has a real part and an imaginary part so if you split the transfer function by replacing s with the j omega j is the uh, square root of my minus 1 the iota number and the omega is the free frequency of the system uh, so uh, real part of g of j omega plus j times imaginary part of g of j omega if you split a transfer function into its real and imaginary part then uh, you know you can use these real and imaginary parts to analyze uh, or design uh, control for linear systems that is why this uh, frequency so frequency based uh, these characteristics uh, which are derived using the real and imaginary part of the system uh, usually called uh, uh, Nyquist plot so these uh, frequency characteristics uh, is also considered as model for the system and another way of uh, 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 deriving frequency characteristics from a complex number is to use the uh, gain and the phase so this is the gain which is the square root of real part square plus imaginary part square and this is the phase which is tangent inverse of imaginary part over real part and uh, so calculation uh, so one of the importance of frequency characteristics is that you can calculate the steady state response to a sinusoidal input so for example if you apply sinusoidal input to a linear time invariant system uh, then under steady state conditions the response uh, to uh, response to this sinusoidal input by the LTI system is always sinusoidal so this is one of the fundamental theorems in the linear systems theory the magnitude and phase of such uh, steady state output depends upon the frequency characteristics so for example uh, in the steady state uh, a times uh, the, the the y of steady state uh, to uh, of this LTI system uh, which has transfer function g of s uh, uh, to the input a times sine omega t will be a times the gain of g of j omega uh, times sine of uh, here is the, there is a bracket missing here so I'll just uh, put the, put the bracket here so there should be this bracket okay so the response is uh, a times the gain of the transfer function times sine of omega t is the same frequency as the frequency of the input but there will be a phase lag uh, so argument of g of so phase lag will be equal to the angle of g of j omega and uh, utilization of frequency characteristics is that we plot the real part versus the imaginary part of g of j omega and we get the nyquist plot later on in this course you will see that nyquist plot can be used to analyze the stability of the system and it, it can also be used to design or evaluate the control of the system and then uh, uh, we can plot the magnitude of uh, the uh, transfer function versus uh, frequency and the uh, uh, we can also plot the angle or argument of the transfer function versus frequency that will give us Bode plot and this is uh, okay so let me show you uh, you know something about this frequency response using MATLAB so for example uh, uh, let us suppose so let me clear this so let us suppose we have a uh, let's suppose we have a transfer function g1 uh, is equal to is equal to tf uh, one let let's have some zeros as well so one one means s plus one and we have like uh, one four 
7 so s square plus 4s plus 7 so this is our transfer function so I can uh, do body of uh, g1 so body of g1 will give me the uh, plot of the um, so this is body of g1 which is the plot of the magnitude of the transfer function and the phase of the transfer function uh, versus frequency so we ca I can see the frequency characteristics in terms of the gain and the phase of this system and later on we will uh, use this uh, study to analyze or control the system and similarly I can also plot the uh, the Nyquist of G1 Nyquist of G1 and this this is the basically the plot of uh, real axis real part versus the imaginary part of the transfer function this also tells me uh, many things about uh, different characteristics of the system and uh, we'll uh, have uh, another detailed lecture uh, towards the uh, near end of this uh, course about uh, how to use Bode and Nyquist plot for the analysis of the system and also you can use the command lsim lsim of uh, let's suppose uh, you want uh, in order to use lsim let me define the time t is equal to 0 to 0 0.01 and up to let's say 10 so I have the time from 0 to 10 seconds at the interval of uh, 100 milliseconds and then I define u equal to sine let's say 5 times uh, sine of uh, 3t so this is the sinusoidal input a sin omega t and you can use uh, the lsim lsim command and you can plot the response of this transfer function g1 which is s plus 1 over s square plus 4 s plus 7 uh, to the sinusoidal input uh, u uh, for the time t so you uh, just uh, give the lsim uh, the transfer function the input and the time and press enter and this will give you the response so this gray plot is the input that you applied to the system so you applied a 5 magnitude uh, sinusoidal uh, you know input to the system from 0 to 10 seconds and the response of uh, the, uh, the transfer function based uh, you know the response of the LTI system this is the output of the LTI system corresponding to this input and you can see that after you know initial small uh, transient in the steady state the uh, the steady state output of the transfer function is a sinusoid which has gain uh, its gain is less than 1 because there is uh, the magnitude of the output is lesser than the magnitude of the input and there is a phase a phase difference between the input and the output which is equivalent to the phase of the transfer function that we saw in the uh, Bode plot so these uh, that is all uh, for now uh, I hope that this lecture was uh, useful for you in order to keep going in uh, terms of control systems we are just getting started so today we uh, just briefly revised what we discussed in the lecture number two and then we looked at the motivation for uh, studying the mathematical modeling of LTI systems then we looked at the type of uh, modeling for LTI systems then we looked at differential equation its example then we looked at transfer function and transfer function uh, how we convert differential equation into transfer function like then we looked at some terminologies related to transfer function that we then we looked at you know an example of transfer function then we looked at impulse response examples of impulse response the mat matlab uh, commands and uh, uh, step uh, response and uh, the example of step response and then importance of impulse response in terms of calculating various responses to different inputs and then frequency characteristics and associated you know theorem related to the LTI systems that response to a sinusoidal input by an LTI system is always sinusoidal in the steady state so there are some transients and then when the response settles down it settles down as a sinusoid where the uh, magnitude of g of j omega uh, determines whether the uh, sinusoid output will be amplified or attenuated and this angle defines the phase lag or lead between the input
input and output and then we also uh, saw the body and nyquist plot commands in the matlab so that is it for now and uh, soon uh, we'll uh, be back with lecture number four of uh, this course thank you for watching